David Livingston is one of history's greatest explorers. He was so successful because he was willing to go where few people, few other people were willing to go. He's the first Westerner that explored the continent of, of Africa from tip to tip. And while he was in Africa, he received a letter from uh, a mission society in London that asked him if there was, um, if he had found a good road that led to where he currently was, because if so, they had men that they would send to him to help him. And he sent back correspondence that basically said, don't worry about it. He said, if you have men who are only willing to go where there is a good road leading to it, I can't use them. I need men who are willing to go where there are no roads. Kind of like the precursor of off-roading. And off-roading kind of gets to the heart of what Jesus is talking about this morning when we get a chance in the Gospel of Mark to eavesdrop on a conversation between him and his disciples. It's the first time he tells his disciples about what lies ahead, about how the Son of Man, Jesus the Messiah, will undergo great suffering and die and on the third day be raised again. And the disciples are horrified. So much so that Peter takes him off to the side and rebukes him. Like, can you imagine scolding Jesus? Only Peter. But Peter's horrified. It's like, no, 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 no. Now, Peter's not only horrified for Jesus, Peter's horrified for himself and the other disciples. Because you see, Peter had just recognized Jesus as the Messiah and stated that he was the Messiah. But Jesus had just informed him that human definition of the Messiah and the Messiah's journey was totally different than what the Messiah's definition of the Messiah and the Messiah's journey was. You see, they had been waiting for the Messiah for generations. Generations. So literally, these disciples their entire life were waiting for the Messiah, and they were certain that what the Messiah would do would be to lead an armed insurrection against Rome and overthrow the Roman Empire so that they could have their land and their freedom back. That the Messiah was going to physically liberate them. But what the Messiah really came to do was to liberate and free all people from something much bigger and much greater. It was only through his death that Jesus was going to conquer death and set us all free. And Peter did not want to hear that. And Jesus tells him and the rest of the disciples that if any want to be my followers, if you want to be a Christian, in today's language, here's what you have to do. You have to deny yourself, you have to take up your cross, and you have to follow me. Now, let's get something straight. When he says deny ourselves, he's not talking about denying ourselves of physical luxuries or um, it's not like giving up chocolate for Lent. Um, although following him may indeed mean that we give up some of those things. Um, I can speak to that. It's true. Um, but what he's talking about giving up is something much deeper. He's talking about we need to give up our ridiculous claim that our lives are our own and that we have control over them. We have to be willing to put our identity in God's hands, to become who God wants us to be, to go where God wants us to go, and to pick up our cross. You know, I, I will hear people often say things like, they have um, a chronic condition, physical condition, and they'll say, it's my cross to bear. Or they have some very sad um, life circumstance, and they'll say, well, I guess it's my cross to bear. No, no. Those are unfor unfortunate circumstances. Those are not crosses to bear. When Jesus talks about bearing a cross, think about the cross he bore. 
He didn't die for his sake. He didn't go to the cross to forgive his sins. He took on our sins. The cross he bore was our cross. So when we take up the cross, it's we're taking up the burdens of other people. We are to be the hands and feet of Jesus, helping others carry their burdens. So, and then we are to follow him. Now, Jesus is the original off-roader. Jesus did not go down well-worn paths. He didn't go down paved streets. Jesus made his own way, his own path, and he still does. And so when he calls us to follow him, we're going to end up in places we never expected to go, doing things we never expected to do. And it's not always going to be comfortable. In fact, I guarantee you, I can't tell you where Jesus is going to lead you, but I guarantee you it's going to be straight out of your comfort zone. He does it to all of us. We want to be able to travel within the borders of our comfort zone. We're very happy there, thank you. And I'm including myself there. But that's not where he lets us stay. He calls us out of our comfort zone and into places we don't want to go, to meet people we don't want to meet, to spend time interacting with people we don't want to interact with, and to examine values, thoughts, and ideas that we would rather hold on to, but he's going to call us to wrestle with letting them go and seeing things in a new way. I've long thought, and one of these days I'm actually going to sit down and do it, I want to write a series in which we talk about what's really in the Bible. Because it's not what you think. It's not what I thought when I went to seminary. There are so many times, in fact, I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody say, well, you know, the Bible says X, Y, and Z, and I'm thinking, nope. No, it doesn't. And then there are all kinds of things. So not only do we think the Bible says things that it doesn't, the Bible actually says things we don't want it to say because it goes in direct violation of, of what we believe and what we think. Um... And to really engage Jesus Christ means to reevaluate some of those long-held things. Um, and I hate, I hate these words because you're going to automatically think political, and that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, but for lack of better words, I'm going to use um, conservative and liberal. But conservative people are going to be forced to embrace some things that they think are liberal and wrong, and they're actually things of Jesus. And Jesus is going to ask them to see things in a new way. Liberals are going to be asked to embrace things that they think are conservative and wrong. And Jesus is going to ask them to embrace and see things his way. He doesn't care whether we call them liberal or conservative. He calls his way his way. And I guarantee you, we're all going to be called to struggle with a new way of seeing things when we follow Jesus, when we truly follow Jesus. Following Jesus is going to take us off-roading. There's a reason why off-roading is so popular. It's, um, it's thrilling. It's thrilling and exciting. Um, but you know what? It's also jarring and jolting. And even the people in best shape take a Tylenol when they're done because they know they're going to hurt the next day because their body's been beaten up. Off-roading with Jesus is going to require emotional, mental, and spiritual Tylenol because it's going to hurt. It's going to be a process that exercises muscles and parts of our soul and our mind that we didn't want exercised. But he's going to call us to struggle with new ways of seeing things, new ways of doing things. To spend time doing things we don't want to do. But off-roading is thrilling. It takes you to the edge of, of 
your comfort zone and it, it brings excitement and thrills, a little fear. Um, it helps you see things in a whole new way. I mean, there's a reason why it's so popular. It's because it's like living to the extreme. To, to, you, you don't go off-roading and not know you're alive. Well, the same is true with off-roading with Jesus. It's going to take you places you never thought you'd go. It's going to be jarring and jolting. It's going to be um, a little pain-inducing. It's definitely going to be out of your comfort zone. It's going to be on the edge. But it's going to bring you a thrill and an excitement like you've never experienced. Because it's living. You know, we think we're living when we are having control of our lives. But we're not. We're existing. It's only when we sacrifice our lives to Jesus and follow him and 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 live our lives the way he wants us to live them that we truly understand what living is all about. It's incredible. So my prayer for all of us today is that we have the courage to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and go off-roading with Jesus. 